Perfect. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about autoimmune diseases and stress and diet and our bodies and life all yeah. over. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Alicia Elmston, uh, the founder of Queen Shop Fine Hairdressing. Um, we are a salon that is founded on sustainability, beauty, and community. And these kinds of topics are pretty uh, close to me because I'm affected by them uh, every day. Um, and our lovely Dr. Hillary, who I've gotten to see from school up mm -hmm. into her blossoming career. <laughs> and every time I speak to her or go for uh, an appointment, I'm always just impressed and so excited for her so oh, this thanks. is Hillary. That's so sweet. hi <laughs> <laughs> i'm dr hillary just call me hillary um alicia also I, I actually was thinking today so alicia cuts my hair obviously and it's perfection every single time and i thought why am i wearing it in a ponytail right now <laughs> um but because okay. we're in covid 19 because we're in covid 19 it's true um, so I'm a naturopathic doctor. I practice in downtown Toronto. I have a practice space uh, in the kind of financial district and then another practice space in Etobicoke. Um, I focus primarily in digestion and autoimmune disease, but of course that means I see a little bit of everything. So um, what we're going to talk about today with stress being so interwoven with that and kind of understanding that relationship is so, so tightly correlated um, with autoimmune and digestion. Um, what else? No, I think those are the big things about me. I don't know. Cool. That's everything. That's perfect. <laughs> um, why don't you um, tell us, yeah, tell us about what's been going on with you with your current situation with your body and the stress and everything. And then I'll, you know, I'll give you my, my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I'm totally okay to talk about it. It's, um, many people aren't necessarily, especially a disease like the one that I have. It's pretty like taboo to talk about, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like it's not heavily researched. Um, so I have lichen sclerosis, which is a non-contagious skin disease uh, that falls in the autoimmune de uh, department. Um, I always have plenty of digestive things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most people do, to be honest. <laughs> most Fair. people's digestion needs um, a little help. And... Um, Life is generally a certain uh, livable amount of stress, though lately, obviously, I think we've all experienced a, uh, an additional level of stress with having COVID-19 on our plates and a lot of people not really knowing what to do, whether they're in my position or a similar position to you and you can't go into your office, yeah. uh, you can't see your clients uh, or you're at home um, and you don't know what to do with yourself there, or yeah. if you have kids, or if you're on the other extreme of you're an essential worker, you're going every oh, so day stressful. out there, mm -hmm. um, and then also have kids. Uh, yeah. There's just so much stress, and, and so I think this is a really key thing um, to talk about, and yeah. I think I'm a good person to talk about all the different things that have happened with my bodies, and uh, bodies, body, uh, and... <laughs> Hillary, you can also explain what that stuff means. Yeah, um, thanks for sharing. I know it's like it's really tough to talk about, especially a lot of these autoimmune conditions are not not spoken about or really misunderstood, um, and especially you know with something like lichen sclerosis, where it's not a really common one as well. Um, that makes it even harder. Um, but yeah, so I thought what I would do is start by kind of giving you my brain definition of stress. Because I think we all know what stress is, obviously, right? <laughs> stress is currently COVID-19. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what that means in the body. And then I'm going to talk about how it relates to the immune system. So if you are someone with an autoimmune condition, we'll kind of talk about that. And then we'll talk about, like, sort of um, what that means for what we can do to fix it. So the first thing, um, stress. I always think about stress as a lion is chasing you. So right now, COVID-19 is chasing you. Um, but it's more that, you know, when we're under stress, this is fight or flight, right? So under this fight or flight response, our body changes its, phys its physiology so that we can run or we can fight. So it changes our the way that our blood vessels kind of squeeze and move things over so that that way it goes to the big muscles of our body, our lungs, our heart, uh, our glutes, things like that. Um, 
It also is going to raise our blood pressure, change the way our blood flows in our brain, a whole bunch of stuff. But the biggest thing in relationship to the immune system is that stress or called fight or flight is the opposite of rest and digest. So we're in this stressful state. If you're kind of feeling revved up all the time, which is understandable given what's going on right now, you are not sitting in this rest and digest state. And when we're constantly doing that for a long period of time, it's going to impact our digestive system. Yes, but our immune system all sits in the digestive tract. So 70% of the immune system is actually in our gut. So if you're constantly in this fight or flight, run, 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 being chased by a lion kind of a situation, especially under these stressful circumstances, it's going to impact the way that your gut lining functions, the flora that are living in your gut, Mm -hmm. um, and then your immune system from that perspective. (laughs) So when we have an autoimmune disorder, what's going on in the body is your, your body is actually creating too many of these little immune soldiers. And usually we create them and we say, okay, go and attack bacteria A. And your soldier's like, okay, yes, I will. Anything else? And your body's like, yes, one more thing. Never attack it, our own body. Never, ever, ever. And the soldier's like, okay, I got it. Goes and attacks that bacteria and things are fine. When we're creating tons and tons and tons of soldiers all at once, we forget to train them not to attack our own bodies. So when someone like yourself, Felicia, your body is attacking its own tissues. For yeah. myself as well, I have eczema. So it's a different manifestation, same kind of thing. My body attacks itself. Um, and I get an eczema surfacing on my skin and it's really uncomfortable, but it's because I've created too many soldiers, forgot to tell them not to attack myself. And then those soldiers are kind of a bit dumb and they go and they attack your own body. Yeah. So it's that <laughs> dysregulation. I know it's a bit, yeah. it's a funny analogy, but it's a good way to remember it. Yeah. Um, so I, I, what else did I want to say about that? So the rest and digest. Um, the immune system being in your gut. And then the other big thing is when we're really stressed out, we also don't tend to eat or sleep as well as we should. Mm -hmm. So our ability to absorb nutrients, the nutrients we actually might be eating um, or lack thereof, right? We're always reaching for the like carby, delicious, sweet treats when we're (laughs) stressed. Yes, but they have no nutrients. So your body, again, doesn't regulate its immune function as well. Um, And we sleep poorly when we're stressed. And when we're sleeping, you know, remember the opposite of fight or fight is rest and digest. So obviously when we're sleeping, we're in that restful state and we're able to um, really regulate and really manage our immune system. So again, if we're not sleeping, (laughs) we're stuck over here, not regulating things. And then we also alter the gut flora. That's the last thing I wanted to say about that. So um, research shows us that when we're stressed out, that high cortisol level with getting us into that fight or flight is actually killing off the good bacteria that's supposed to be living in our gut. And it so, is like, allowing soldiers. It's killing the good flora. So not the soldiers in terms oh, of our sorry. analogy. Yeah, this, that's actually killing the good bacteria that's supposed to be living in the gut. We're supposed to have this lovely little gut microflora living in there. And those good, you know, this is why I take probiotics, for example. And those types of good bacteria in the gut flora help to regulate the immune system. Okay. As well as actually, fun, funnily enough, regulate <laughs> our um, anxiety hormones. So when we're okay. stressed, we feel more anxious. And that's why. Right. Um, yeah, so... That stress has a huge, huge impact on what goes on for why our autoimmunity gets way worse um, when we're stressed, why our digestion gets worse when we're stressed, why our anxiety gets worse when we're stressed, all these things. It's very fun. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. How has it been impacting you lately? Um, So for me, often what I find, um, I'll just have flare ups, Mm -hmm. um, different reactions with my skin. always my digestion is like a I don't know it's like a baby running around I'm trying to catch it yeah. <laughs> um uh and then I've also had some hair loss this year mm-hmm. uh, which I know I mean I, I'm a hairdresser so I'm not really scared of that I'm very aware of the function of my body and what's happening and the fact that it's literally uh, a cause and result. cause and effect yeah cause and effect thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and so when you do release that hair that mm-hmm. generally you're in a good spot and that means that the stress has kind of passed and you're coming into a better spot um because your body just can't handle things anymore um so there's there's those things uh what else I guess I get more acne yeah 
Definitely. <laughs> coming coming out in the skin, right? Mm -hmm. If our yeah, digestion sure. is dysregulated, our detox elimination pathways are dysregulated, exactly. comes right out in the skin. Yeah, which is not yeah. a lot of fun, but also a normal and health like healthy, but a natural way that your body is going to do that. Yes. Um, try to get it out. Yeah, it comes out in so many different ways and so many different people. My patients right now, I'm seeing, you're right, flare-ups of skin diseases, um, eczema, psoriasis, um, lichen sclerosis, acne. I'm seeing flare-ups in joint pain. That's another big one I'm seeing lots oh, of. Oh, that would make sense, especially yeah. if you're not eating well. Yeah, exactly. It cause inflammation in your whole body. Yeah, exactly. Um, flare-ups of headaches, um, anxiety, big one. Um, anxiety and depression are huge right now. Lots of people are really struggling with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the biggest thing that people keep talking about is just trying to do a little bit of exercise. Yeah. Any Hugely kind important. of exercise inside even. Um, yep. Just to get your blood flowing. Get things circulating. Pull you out of your, I think a lot of us are in our heads right now. And <laughs> yeah. we're all just like, think, 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 think. You yeah. know, the news is on pulling you kind of out of that and into your body a little bit is helpful. Mm -hmm. And it can be a big stress relief um, exercising. It boosts those endorphins. So we yeah. get that lovely little endorphin hit after we work out. And then it, that helps to kind of get us out of that fight or flight and into that rest and digest state as well. So that's helpful. Um, the way I like to think about um, how can we help to lower those stress levels and other things that we can do, um, I think about stress like a big cup that we're filling up. And so whatever we're putting into it is going to fill up that cup. So if we're eating poorly, we fill it up. If we're sleeping poorly, we fill it up. We have an autoimmune disease, we fill it up. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to answer your question or we'll answer your question in just a sec, but thank you for your question. Um, yeah, so anything that's going to help to fill up our cup, if we can drain that cup a little bit, there's more room before we reach the top of that cup and our, that stress is overflowing where it's getting to a point of overwhelm and it's causing things in the body. Um, so the question that we just got, does stress make hair fall out more than normal? Yes, it absolutely does. 100%. Um, and, yeah, so Alicia mentioned just a minute ago, which makes so much sense to me, if you want to like reiterate that, and then I'll give you my perspective yeah, as well. Um, it 100%, I mean, for, for me, again, I, like it doesn't bother me that it's happened. It's more of like a, oh, wow, I'm that level of stress, if anything, because I know one, it's just a cause and effect, like we were saying, and it also grows back. Um, but it is definitely a huge sign of like, okay, something needs to change. Yeah. And I need, I need to take a step back for myself and do some self care with myself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other, the other parts for, from my naturopathic brain perspective of why it's happening is if you're really stressed out and you're eating poorly. So say you're eating lots of carbs and a lot more sugar than usual, and that kind of a thing. Um, you're probably missing out on protein, which is actually, believe it or not, what hair is made of. So you're not eating enough protein. Mm -hmm. so you can't make more hair. Um, and then secondly, maybe not enough iron in your diet, <laughs> which is also <laughs> going to Sorry. prevent you from having enough hair, which yeah. is not, you know, so that being able to grow hair. So iron, yeah. big one to maybe make sure that you're getting Can enough of protein. Yeah. I imagine you see this as well, but if from a hairdresser's perspective, if the hair is ra rather brittle mm -hmm. and fine, and it's not typically like that, my first option is to say that you're low in iron yeah. and to get some blood work done. Always, always get blood work done for iron at least once a year. And yeah, if you're noticing your hair is brittle and falling out, definitely crank up the protein that you're eating in your diet, not just for iron, but for the actual protein building blocks. Get your blood work done for your iron. The big tip, write this down, is that we want your iron to be hitting. It's ferritin is what it is on blood work. It should be 70. That's always my goal for patients. Um, the reference range of normal, I'm going to put air quotes around that, is 5 to 272. So if you're at 6, your family doctor won't call you back and say, hey, your iron's low. But it's a huge pet peeve of mine because if you're at 6, you're not growing good hair your energy level is not in a good place. You know, you're not carrying yeah. oxygen around your body the way you should. So, and you're going to feel like crap, to be honest. Yeah. So aim, aim for 70 on that blood work and your naturopath can always help with that. Um, so yes, great it's correction. <laughs> side little thought, that mm -hmm. procedure to pass your regular family doctor's blood work off to your naturopath is relatively yeah. simple with a form. 
Yeah, so you can fill out a form for sure. Um, you can fill out a form uh, with your naturopath and they can fax your doctor directly. Or my new fun little trick is take your requisition from your family doctor to a Life Labs location. And then at Life Labs, ask for the acquisition number to get your own oh. labs online. And you can just get your own. It's amazing. Oh, cool. That's yeah, great. You just access them and then you just email them to your naturopath. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'll let you answer that question. Okay. Yeah. So biotin is actually vitamin B7. Um, <clears throat> biotin supplements with hair growth. Yes, we need biotin to grow hair. But to be completely honest with you, um, most biotin supplements, I've never really seen someone come in and be like, you know, go from I have no biotin in my diet to I have, I'm taking this biotin supplement, all of a sudden my hair is growing. It's usually harder. <laughs> it's usually more to it than just biotin. Um, again, you need it to grow hair, but also it's usually such a small piece of that big puzzle. So yeah, what are your, well. I'm going to jump on that thought too, mm -hmm. because I definitely get this question and I have no idea. I'm kind of, mm. my mindset is like, well, if you want to try it, you let me know how it turns out and I'll let you know <laughs> when I see a difference. Yeah. Um, is things like silica or a lot of people taking collagen now. Yeah. Um, so the collagen is an interesting one. I just did a post on it. If you guys want to take a look, most of the research is not really for hair, but there is, um, I mean, it makes sense that it would support hair growth. Most of the research is for skin elasticity, joint pain, um, and gut healing. But yes, I think collagen is something that's pretty decent to try, but think about it, dial it back. All collagen <coughs> in is protein. So if you eat enough protein, you should be okay. Um, and then silica. Yes, again, we need these things in order to build our like hair follicle, whatever, build hair itself. Um, but if you're eating like a really sort of a well-balanced diet, and you're focusing on nutrition, one little like hair, skin and nails gummy bear is probably not going to contain the dosing that you need in order to do much more than eating a handful of nuts. Yeah. Eat That's a handful. Fair. Yeah. Um, but food. I mean, eat real food. Yeah. yeah. And speak to somebody about buying a supplement that has the appropriate dose in it. Because a lot of times the ones on the market are like literally a milligram when we need a hundred milligrams and they can be such low dosing that it's not really worth it, worth your money. Right. Yeah. So and that would be a kind of one. service that you would offer if someone was yeah. to come in for a uh, oh, yeah. consultation. Uh, yeah. A visit. You can call it a visit, an appointment, a chat. Appointment. Um, but yeah, we always go over all your supplements, your medications, your health history. We may send you for more additional lab testing if you want it or if you need it. Um, yeah, the whole picture, we talk about diet. Yeah. Um, why don't we, I'm going to go back into like kind of our stress stuff. And if you guys yeah. have more questions, send them yeah. on in and we'll happy to happy to chat about them. So we were kind of talking about like draining their cup. So if your cup is overflowing, i.e. Your, your symptoms are flaring, your skin's flaring, your digestion's flaring, whatever it is, or you're feeling overwhelmed, the question is, what can I change that can drain my cup? I can't change COVID. I can't change the fact that my husband doesn't turn off the bathroom light. <laughs> he can't hear me, I hope. <laughs> um, we all got it. Yeah. We, you know, you can't change some of these things. But what you can change are... Um, <laughs> Some of these other aspects of things filling up your cup. So your sleep. Hopefully you can make some changes there. You can set a bedtime. Make sure you're strict with it. Treat yourself like a little kid. Don't have screens right before bedtime. Um, read a book or do some yoga or some deep breathing before bed instead. Go to bed at the same time every night. Give your body some consistency. And if you've been on my Instagram, you've seen like probably a million <clears throat> posts about sleep. But my biggest thing is get a sleep mask. I promise you it will help. And all these things, again, if you get an awesome sleep where you wake up the next morning, you're like, man, that was good. You're draining your cup. So you're making it less likely that these autoimmune things are going to flare. Um, and then, yeah. And then the other big thing is to um, do use like, I'm going to call it gut safe nutrition. So you're just trying to make sure that you're eating foods that are going to give your body good building blocks. We talked about protein. That's important. Yeah. Um, making sure that you're getting nutrient dense foods, colorful veggies, legumes, nuts and seeds, but you're avoiding the foods that may trigger or flare these types of conditions. So dairy, oh my gosh, I heard on the CBC the other day that dairy farmers, and I'm so sorry for the people who are not experiencing, you know, are experiencing hardships right now, but that dairy farmers are actually, the demand for cow's milk has gone down during this COVID situation which I was surprised about and that they're losing money anyway um but yeah dairy not so good for autoimmunity at all 
um, gluten, not good for autoimmunity, sugar, and processed foods. So again, if you're feeling stressed and your, your instinct is to reach for those sweet treats and those gluten and dairy heavy type items, try and have your brain Hillary on your shoulder kind of trigger in and say, hey, you would be doing your body a better service by having mm -hmm. something more nutrient dense. So reaching for almond butter on a rice cake instead of um, like butter on toast or searching for hummus and rice crackers instead of for chips or having, I don't know, a piece of fruit paired with a handful of almonds instead of some sort of like sugary snack, something like that. I'm um, going to throw out the mm -hmm. thought too, because um, I don't often think about carbs as sugar. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I can't have bread. Um, <laughs> but I do love rice. Mm -hmm. um, I do love potatoes. Yeah. And uh, I think it, there's one part that I've learned from you, even though I am always thinking about diet. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it never really dawned on me before just how closely related, obviously, those carbs are to sugar. Yeah, they are. I mean, basically all carbs are. They can be broken down into three. I think of it like a Venn diagram with the three little parts. Yeah. Um, in one circle, it says starch. So things like brown rice, for example, are high in starch. In another one, it says fiber. So fiber is our good part of our carbs that we need, yeah. and they feed our gut flora. And the other one is sugar. So if you're trying to have things that are high in fiber, great, great, great. Low in sugar, awesome. And then, you know, starch is going to happen here and there, like things like brown rice or sweet potatoes or squash. They're all going to have starches, but you just have to break down carb as a whole into those three categories to yeah. understand it better and understand where we're leaning, like leaning in and leaning away from different things, um, which can be tricky because, yeah, people are like, I'm on a low carb diet. And I'm like, you don't know the definition of carb. <laughs> <laughs> You mean low sugar diet? We should be on low sugar diets. All of yeah. us should be. I'm yeah. very anti-sugar. Um, but <laughs> because it skews our immune system yeah. hugely. Um, within six hours of eating refined sugar, your gut flora is strongly skewed, which is crazy. I'd probably say that's probably one of my bigger issues. It's one of a lot of people's big issues. Craving sugar is what we do. It's the yeah. fastest way to get your brain fuel and food. Yeah. Right. So it's a natural thing, especially if you're on like a bit of a crash, whether it be emotionally or energy levels or um, a, a sh yeah, like a sugar high, low type crash. The first thing you're going to crave is sugar every time because my, my I like to call it a hug from food. <laughs> That's exactly what it so is. what you're saying is right now while you're stressed out. Mm hmm don't go for sugar. <laughs> you're going to you're going to your primitive brain is going to say go for sugar. But yeah. you as an evolved person are going to know <laughs> <laughs> that you'll do your body a better service by going for, again, my big rule, fat, fiber, protein with every meal and every snack. It's another Hillary rule. Um, yeah. So if you want, you know, your brain's like, please give me sugar and you're like, you've got an apple around. Great. Fat, fiber, protein. Okay. Does it have fat? Does it have fiber? Does it have protein? So now we have to find something with fat and protein to add to your apple so that you get fat, fiber, and protein. So the easiest thing is almond butter with that apple. Good to go. Now you have fat, fiber, protein. You get a Hillary check mark, and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, you don't have but, to feel guilty about your sugar intake. Well, yes. And as long as you're, <laughs> you're <laughs> you like, don't have to feel guilty. <laughs> you're like, well, as long as it's only you know up to a certain amount of sugar per day. The American yeah. Heart Association max of sugar is 25 grams a day. So sure. 25 grams of sugar per day is pretty easy to hit. Unfortunately, an apple has 15 grams of sugar. A banana has 17. So it can be really well, tricky. So like a fruit and a half. A fruit and a half. So I say max of two, aim for one of, okay. of servings of fruit per day. And instead, we're going to go for fat fiber protein. So nuts and seeds are wonderful. Legumes are wonderful. Hummus, guacamole, those things are all great. Um, yeah, I eat a lot of like nut butter on rice cakes. <laughs> Always a good snack. Or having sort of like a fourth smaller meal in a day is wonderful. Um, but just making sure that you're, even though your primitive brain is like, no, I am stressed and anxious and upset and fed up. And all I want right now is 
like all of the treats guys I'm gonna post a, I'm gonna make a post later this week about cookies so please ignore that um <laughs> <laughs> even though your primitive brain wants the treats low sugar, you're gonna do yeah turkey. low sugar low sugar and keep do your body a better service by fat fiber protein giving it those nutrient dense and sort of immune system supportive foods so that you can drain that cup, limit that stress overburden, and hope to minimize all these other symptoms that you might be feeling because of the stress. I know. It's really hard to do. You have to fight your primitive brain all the time. Not like... <sighs> Sigh. Yeah. Sigh, I know. Um, <laughs> are there any other points that you feel we should talk hmm. about? I think the only other thing is vitamin D. So okay. vitamin D is hugely important for combating autoimmune disease. Canada has a, one of the lowest rates of vitamin D in the world and the highest rate of autoimmune D in the world. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, and part of it I strongly believe is because OHIP doesn't cover testing for vitamin D. And even if it does, they've set a low bar. So it actually doesn't hit World Health Organization standards for vitamin oh, D. Yeah, it's frustrating. Um, so... On a day like today where it's nice, within, within COVID standards, do not go near anybody. Keep yourself safe. If you can get a little sun on your face and get some vitamin D, that would be strongly encouraged for your mental health, for your mood, for your autoimmunity, for everything. Um, yeah, try and get a little bit of sun, especially if this does progress into the coming months and like it yeah. gets light, nicer and nicer. I suppose that on the plus side, but it get that be vitamin D and get it tested get when things change and we're allowed to go get tests again. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess if we're not all working inside in cubicles and offices all the time, <laughs> we can go outside and get some sun. Hopefully, <laughs> we can lower these rates of vitamin D deficiencies. You know, 93% of Canadians are deficient in vitamin D. Wow. 93%. That's it's crazy. crazy. So consider yourself deficient. <laughs> and don't, go get some vitamin don't even D. get tested. Just guarantee that's what the government suggests is don't get in don't get tested just assume you're low but my question is always well how low yeah 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 well, is, so it, I, is it so low that you're need to be concerned and doing things or is it yeah manageably low exactly because we can't just take vitamin d until well, you know can't just take it orally in high amounts because it's toxic right. um, at high yeah. amounts so you so getting tested is important pardon i said that's interesting yeah it's interesting and it should be more i think more well known. Yeah, you can't just go take a whole bunch of vitamin D supplements and be fine. But you can't OD from the sun. <laughs> so go get some sun. You heard it here. <laughs> you need vitamin D. Just be careful. Just be careful. Exactly. Drain that cup, manage your stress, reach out for support when you need it. I know that I'm still seeing patients right now. Um, if you go on my uh, Instagram, you can see on my website, I have my booking link, but I'm doing all video com consults through a secure um, uh, like regulatory body accredited um, platform so That's that I great. can still support my patients. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of support is needed right now. Or it's also an opportunity to actually have the time to see someone like me right now. So if yeah. you can, go for it. Um, support small business. How can we support you? Um, we have our retail store up. Uh, so that's good. So any, any kinds of situations like this, if you are experiencing a sensitive scalp, which mm -hmm. can happen, um, when you're stressed and you have an autoimmune disease and you're okay. having flares, um, our calm, um, helps relieve that. Also, if you are experiencing thinning, I'm doing our energizing treatments. Uh, we also have stuff for, um, like psoriasis or dandruff as well, the purifying. So there's definitely things like that that are available on our uh, online store, um, which is also in our bio link. Okay, on and, the online store. Uh, we're trying to stay connected and send out emails on a regular basis just so that clients mm -hmm. know what's happening and are aware of these things. And we also want to do these twice a week, uh, different people, mm -hmm. um, get different perspectives and just be an informative platform for everyone helping the community be better i love exactly. it exactly so That's, nice i mean i think you share the same sentiment that realistically that's why we got into yeah. business where we deal yeah. with people period is just because we have the biggest hearts and we just care 
Um, I, money is nice, but I think there's a big part of a lot of people that are in industries like ours that we just want you to be okay. We want you to be okay. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's, that's really what it boils down to, bottom line. <laughs> we want you to be okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have any, any other questions or anything like that before we... Yeah. <laughs> Question time? Question time? No, I think people were good about putting up their questions as they, yeah. as they came up. But uh, yeah, do you have any other questions? Um, I don't. No. I think mm -hmm. I think I'm good on my. I mean, where's this? You're very much sunshine. in the sun. Very much in the sun. <laughs> Getting all the vitamin D, so <laughs> that's good. Maybe. Oh dear. No, I still no. Don't I don't think so. I think you got to be out there. Yeah. Um. There we go. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think I'm good. Yeah. Good. I'm going to write an article, actually, I think, Great. in the next couple of days, just summing up how stress impacts our autoimmune diseases. So if you missed it, if you just joined our live and you didn't get to hear all of our um, lovely thoughts about uh, autoimmune disease, minimizing stress um, and how it kind of impacts our bodies, look out for that. <laughs> uh, you'll find I'll post that, that on soon. your website? Yeah, I'll, probably, I'll post like an Instagram like post about it so that it'll um, give some info there and then link to it. So you'll be able to find it pretty easily in the next couple there, of days. And you have tons of other articles that you've made previously as well that will probably touch on similar topics. Yeah, there are definitely some things about overcoming stress, about some autoimmunity. There's a topic about vitamin D. Um, there's lots of things on my Instagram to, to scroll through at your leisure. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, my dear. Thank you for coming out to this, joining me. Thank you me. for hosting. I think